Hi, I'm Nick Chase from Cloud Geometry. Welcome to our series on platform engineering. We've been doing platform engineering since before it was even a thing, and we've noticed several problems coming up again and again. In previous videos, we showed you how easily you can provision your Kubernetes platform with the Cloud Geometry Cloud Native Quick Start Kit, then use GitOps to help manage the infrastructure. We also looked at creating a CI CD pipeline for promoting your changes between environments. Then we looked at individual workloads, including workload isolation. In this video, we're going to put it all together and look at aligning workload metrics with prior event data you can instrument into your applications. Combine that with creating a single custom dashboard and you should be ready to go. Here's David Fishman to show you how it works. So in this demo, we're going to show how we approach log management and the problem of aligning workload metrics and prior event data instrumented by developers using open source and industry standard tools like Loki and Grafana. We will cover how Kubernetes core services and workload logs are collected, how new services and workloads are discovered, log data queries and visualization of log derived metrics, how we obfuscate sensitive data like PII from log streams, zoom into workloads and see how to combine metrics and logs in a single view, and see how we notify on specific events determined based on log data. Our log management solution is powered by Loki, which is similar to Prometheus, but focuses on logs rather than metrics. It automatically collects log data from the Kubernetes cluster using a log client. The main goal of the client is to capture the log stream, validate it, split it into batches, and then send it for ingestion to the Loki cluster, which will store the data. Out of the box, we are using the Promptail client implementation, which automatically scrapes logs from all the pods running on the same node as that Promptail, and we have Promptail implemented on all nodes. Promptail also allows us to extract metrics from logs such as the number of occurrences of a particular message. It is also possible to use other clients such as FluentD and FluentBit or Logstash. This allows for integration with existing log management solutions and simplifies the adoption of Loki. We collect most critical logs produced by the Kubernetes system components, core platform services like Argo CD and workload logs. So let's check this out. Each time an API endpoint is called, we write some debug level messages to our log stream. By opening our demo app web page here, we've triggered some API calls, and you can now see the messages that we collected from the logs. Loki log scraping and discovery works similarly to Prometheus, which we demonstrated in a previous video. We have already taken care of filters, labels, and relabeling processes so that when you deploy a new workload, all that is left for you to do is to put a label on your services with the name drop logs and the value true if you don't want to scrape logs for this workload or this specific environment. As you can see, our minimalistic demo app has this label already applied for the dev environment. So all the logs generated by the application on staging and production will be collected and stored, all ready to browse. The logs generated by the application on the development environment will be dropped. And another test. Using the Apache HTTP server benchmarking tool, we will send 20 requests to an API endpoint emulating some work on a server side. We will use a staging environment and now back to our log CLI, and you can see the new data is arriving. One of the advantages of Loki is that it uses Grafana for log data querying and visualization, which gives you the famous single pane of glass interface. Moreover, Promptail and Prometheus act as data sources for Grafana, running together in the Kubernetes cluster to enable powerful debugging as they use the same labels. 
That in turn allows users to filter metrics and log simultaneously, which easily isolates specific nodes and pods and timeframes, and to switch between them based on the label set. As we are leveraging the same Grafana interface, we have the same OIDC powered by Vault. And you may have noticed the Vault logo while we were logged into Grafana. RBAC is also shared, so developers will be limited to their own workloads, and you don't have to configure permissions twice. In addition to metrics visualization dashboards, which we demonstrated in a previous video, we provide log management dashboards for different Kubernetes services for our platform services and for your workloads. These can be used as a standalone log browsing solution, or it could be integrated with some workload specific monitoring views, which we can show you a bit later. Some of the dashboards we provide are the app service view and stack specific workload views that we will jump to in a moment, as well as Promptail Loki dashboard, which we will show later in this video. Now, look at the service view with quick search and timeline. This dashboard allows you to view logs for the Kubernetes app. So think of it as a user-friendly functionality of the version we demonstrated to you just a moment ago with the log CLI and our demo app. You can also use it to view other apps or even system processes like Kube Proxy. You can use it for stack specific dashboards for workloads like Node.js which we use for our demo app, which then allows for viewing of logs and metrics in a single view. Remember, we still have our benchmarking tool running. So now let's zoom in to that pod and check what's going on. We'll use this GUI client called Lens to check logs exposed by our application pod. As you can see, we have a series of API calls and with each incoming call, we also have some extra information added by developers for debugging purposes. While this could be really useful in non-production environments, it could also introduce privacy risks in the production environments because logs can contain PII like email addresses or social security numbers or phone numbers or passwords or IP addresses or anything that the developer was inattentive enough to include. PII in log data is considered to be PII for compliance purposes by regulations like GDPR, CCPA, or HIPAA. This extra information also contains incoming request headers that usually include user IP addresses. Now, we have this covered for you because we ship with a set of obfuscation rules that are applied before sending the logs to any central system. These obfuscations are described as code and cover most common types of PII like socials or emails or IP addresses or even credit card numbers, phone numbers, and so forth and so on. And that can easily be extended. As you can see, the IP address that we expect to see here, X forwarded from, is obfuscated using a hash function. So you could still track all the requests from a single given address. Again, obfuscation rules are configured as code, so you can easily change them as part of the Promtail configuration in your Git repository, as you see here. Inside our application, we have an API endpoint, which allows us to initiate application shutdown. When this happens, the application puts a log message indicating that shutdown operation was requested. So let's say we want to notify the team each time this happens. One benefit of using Loki is that you have an alert message based on log data, similar to the way that Prometheus will issue an alert based on a metrics parameter. That's totally reasonable, of course, to understand because they both share output through Grafana. So with Loki and Grafana, you'll be able to notify on any alert triggered by using different types of channels such as email, Slack, 
pager duty, etc. And then visualize that information on the dashboard just as you would with metrics-based alerts. When configuring the alerting rules, the best practice is still the same, which is to manage the alerts as code in your Git repository. Of course, that's the GitOps approach. So let's open the Loki configuration. Here, we already have a ruler, a component responsible for continually evaluating a specific set of queries and performing an action based on the result as configured for our demo app here. In our case, it checks the presence of a phrase application is being forced terminated in the log stream. When this phrase is detected, an alert will be sent to our delivery channel, which we have already configured. In this case, we configured it for Slack. Now, we're all set. So let's send an API request and see what's going to happen. Let's tail the log stream using log CLI and send a shutdown request using the Apache benchmarking tool. You can see the log message shutdown was requested and the application is being forced terminated. Now, the application will exit and the pod will be restarted by Kubernetes. So let's look at Grafana alerting and look at those rules and see if the alerts were triggered. And as you can see, ta-da, it was fired. Now, let's go to Slack and wait a bit, and then you'll see a new message which describes that alert. As I mentioned earlier, let's go back to the dashboards. Let's check the Promtail Loki dashboard, which provides system metrics and alerts, like some error metrics, error and warning logs published by Promtail Loki, and memory and CPU usage of Promptail Loki compared against the limits of memory and CPU usage of Promptail compared to the Kubernetes memory CPU limits and requests. Now you understand that to properly show this view, we needed an active alert, which you can see right here on this view. Now that you've seen how beneficial it is to have both log manage, metrics collection, and visualization solutions, all integrated together, you can see that they provide uniform data browsing and filtering. Such integration simplifies the troubleshooting, which when something goes wrong, which by the way, it will, and it also gives you the opportunity to make changes in the next release to better address what you observed through these integrated inputs. So with little to no effort, you can also add custom dashboards and views. You can add new alert rules, or you can even create custom metrics derived from log data. Best of all, you can do all of that without having to worry about user and permission management because we have already built it in. Thanks.